Hello, here we go again. I'm Ray and welcome to my latest podcast episode. Now, what's this one all about? It's this is a funny one. You know, I'm always banging on as people. Who was it the other day messaged me? Uh, Graham. He said, oh, I love you banging on about this and that. And the other one is harping on, isn't it? Harping on is an old, uh, old expression. So I'm always banging on about the 50s, the 60s, even going to the 40s, sometimes creeping into the 80s. So kind of 60 to, well, 50 to 60 years ago, something like that, going back to those days, the good old days. Now, something happened to me this week. I'll tell you what it was. I went on holiday to Somerset. I mean, that's not what happened to me, but that's where I went. And we stayed just outside the en entrance to Wookie Hole Caves. What a lovely name, isn't it? Wookie Hole. Isn't that amazing? Wookie Hole. <laughs> it's quite, I, I like that. I don't know why. I just, I like that. Now, in the caves, we went in the caves and it just got me thinking, standing in the entrance to the caves, right? No, the first chamber, you go into this first chamber. There are loads of chambers. You can't go into all of them unless you're a diver because you've got to dive down. Some of the water, apparently, we cross this little bridge, this iron bridge. And some places the water is 85 feet deep. It is so crystal clear. It's unbelievable. Now, I stood in this chamber and that is where half a million years ago, people stood. And when I say people, I mean people, people, you know, Homo sapiens, um, Neanderthal man, they stood there. And what they loved about the caves for a, a place to live and to shelter, at the moment, the caves are 11 degrees centigrade and they stay that temperature, midsummer, midwinter outside, freezing or red hot. The caves are 11 degrees centigrade. I would imagine going back half a million years, whatever the temperature was, it was probably similar and stable like that, constant temperature. So what a brilliant place to live. I mean, if you're a Stone Age type person and all you've got is a, a sort of fur loincloth or whatever, and it's kind of minus 10 degrees outside, it's freezing the nuts off a brass monkey, wherever that expression came from, I've no idea. So you go into the cave and it's a, a steady 11 degrees. Midsummer, you know, it could be 30, 40 degrees outside, not in the cave, perfect. And of course, a constant supply of fresh water. I'd like to have tasted the water, actually. You couldn't actually do that. But I would like to have you know, got a glass and filled it up and had a, a drink of the water. It looked so crystal clear. It's incredible. You could see right down to the bottom of these big or they not lakes, whatever they call them. You could see down to the bottom, it was that clear. And it just got me thinking that I'm always, uh, <laughs> you know, banging on about the sort of times, what, 60, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. What about half a million years ago? So it was, I believe it was 480,000 years, nearly half a million years ago, that these people would have been in that cave looking around as I did and seeing presumably more or less the same thing. I don't suppose the caves have changed. Well, they might have changed a bit in half a million years. But it was uncanny. It was a weird feeling to stand there and look around and think this is exactly where they stood and looked around. This is what they saw. You know, the water, the, the walls, the, the stalagmites, the stalactites. Absolutely amazing. Did I pronounce that properly? Oh, I don't know. You don't care, do you? You don't mind. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You know, the women, the children, they go hunting. Apparently their main diet was meat. And that's something else, because I was reading various things. As you go around, you can read these sort of placard things. Their main diet was meat. And I think they had some vegetation as well. But they were saying that uh, when they were hunting, from the you know the skeletons and that they found of these people you can see the ter some of the terrible injuries that they received probably i mean woolly mammoths and stuff you know you try and kill a woolly mammoth probably trample you to bits but they looked at the some of the skeletons and some of the injuries were horrendous now that got me thinking as well i mean this this day and age 
you fall over, you break your leg, oh, damn, here we go. Go to hospital, yeah, they are, plaster, take it off in six weeks' time. Back then, if you broke your leg, what happened? I mean, say you fell over, you broke your leg or your arm. There was no one there to set it, was there, to set the bone. I mean, what if you, as a friend of mine, she fell over, this is years ago, uh, broke her leg and her, I don't know which bone it was, but it was sticking out of her leg. You know, the actual bone was sticking, it won't go f too much into that, it's horrible. What would you have done back then? If that had happened, I suppose they'd die. I don't know, I, it, it, what do they do about pain? You know, the slightest injury. You can hurt yourself, cut yourself or whatever, and it really hurts and it's bleeding everywhere. What do they do about that? I don't know. That got me thinking the difference between then and now. You know how, I mean, all my podcast episodes are about then and now. Then is normally, as I said, the 50s and 60s. But we're now saying then is half a million years ago. No cars. There were advantages. I mean, not many, obviously. But imagine, no roads, no cars, no buildings, nothing. Imagine what the countryside must have been like. Now, we stayed in a chalet, and it was sort of at the top of a hill, of uh, this valley. And across the valley, it was only a short distance. That's where the entrance to the caves were. So we're just across this little valley. You, know, you could walk to the entrance to the caves in sort of 10 minutes, isn't that, that close. But where I looked out from our, we had a little balcony thing, a veranda, and you could see fields the other side, and there was a chap with a, a tractor, he was raking, I don't know what he was doing, raking the, the straw or something, a bit too far away for me to see. That would have all been trees, woods, forest, all of it would have been forest. There weren't any, as far, well, as far as I know, I mean, I don't know, I would imagine everywhere was trees. I don't think there was any open fields because, well, they weren't into agriculture then, were they? I don't think they were doing farming. These um, these people just roamed about. From what I read, settlers settled uh, at Wookie Hole Caves. They settled there because of the fresh water, the, the shelter, the constant temperature, ideal home. So they stayed there. And they found, apparently they found bones of, how about this, rhinoceros? hyena and lions, woolly mammoths, of course, but lions roamed the, the countryside. So, as I said in this notice I was reading, you know, tropical type animals, you know, what's, what's going on? Imagine that. And of course, that's when the UK was joined to France. It was, uh, I, there was some map I was looking at and it's joined so you could wander across. You didn't have to get the ferry or go through the tunnel. But imagine if you can, what it was like then. No concrete. It's very difficult, isn't it? it? It's incomprehensible, really, to picture or to think what it must have been like. You can't comprehend at all. No concrete at all, no buildings, nothing. Just woods, animals, and these Neanderthal-type people. And apparently these people were intelligent. I mean, they made tools out of flint and things, didn't they? Apparently they were intelligent. Imagine what it must have been like, you know, a family. Take, take the, I don't know, I was going to say the wife. The chap's wife didn't have wives, did they? They were just sort of men and women. <laughs> Imagine the ladies, uh, the female ones. They'd be just having a baby every year, wouldn't they? I suppose they had a baby every year for perhaps 15, 20 years, and then they couldn't cope anymore and they probably just died. It's amazing to think back. I remember at school talking of history, which we kind of are. Um, the history, what was her name? Mrs. Nielsen or Nelson. I think it was Mrs. Nielsen. She was going on once and she said to me, right, you know, uh, 1066. I said, oh, um, Battle of Hastings. Right, 1660. I said, yeah, that fire of London, was it? And she asked me a couple more and I said, oh, I don't know, I can't remember. And she was, oh, well, we've, we've covered all this. You know, we've done all this. And this other chap piped up. You know, he was quite an intelligent lad. He said, excuse me, miss. How is any of this information going to be useful to me in later life? I remember the way he put it. And we're all thinking, ooh, ooh, listen to him. But he was right. We all agree with him. And her face, I could, I remember her face. I was watching her. 
and I could see that she was thinking, um, well, probably for most of you, <laughs> it's going to be of no use whatsoever. And I forget what she said to him, you know, it's general knowledge, that sort of thing. Just because I couldn't remember certain dates of what happened here and what happened then, she became annoyed about it because I hadn't remembered. And some other child, she asked him, and he said, oh, I don't know, I can't remember. Of course, someone said, I don't know, I wasn't there. That was the favourite. <laughs> what happened in 1066? Well, how do I know I wasn't there? So I, I must admit, I did feel sorry for her. Her, her job, trying to teach us lot history, it must have been... Oh, she must have woken up and I think, oh no, it's Monday morning, I've got to face that lot again. <laughs> I hated school and I think she did as well. Actually, she had been, she used to go on about um, acting. She'd been a, a makeup artist in some for some film company. And she was telling us that uh, if you wanted someone had to have teeth missing, you put this black stuff, she'd paint this black stuff on their teeth, on, on the actor's teeth. And it appeared that there was a tooth or teeth missing because you painted some a couple of them black. And she told us all sorts of uh, makeup, you know, the wax stuff they used to use in theatre and stuff like that. I think she was more interested in the theatre and props and makeup than she was in what happened in 1066. And we were more interested. There was something else she said. I don't know. Ah, she was a strange one. I think she'd been a nurse because she started one day telling us about how you lay out the dead. And of course, we were all fascinated. We were, what, 13, 14? We're all thinking, oh, this is great. And she said about, they won't, I'm not, I won't go into that because <laughs> we're not talking about laying out the dead. I was also thinking when I was in the woods because uh, our chalet was just on the edge of a, a lovely woodland. And I walked in there, I kept going into the woodland. And I, was, I would stand in there and I'd look round and this is what they saw. I mean, not those trees half a million years ago, but there would have been trees, the birds singing, and, uh, well, probably the odd woolly mammoth coming out of the, the undergrowth to greet you. But I just remember thinking, imagine the bird song half a million years ago. You know, there were loads of birds. I saw a woodpecker, fantastic. There was a hawk. I noticed uh, a couple of them just sitting on the wind up in the sky there, just sitting there, looking down, obviously looking for something to eat, mice and whatever. There were rabbits. Um, I've done a couple of my outside broadcast type recordings. I'll let you hear a couple of them in a minute, as if you're not too bored already. But the amount of rabbits there, there were literally dozens of rabbits, dozens of them, probably hundreds. But back in the woods, listening to the bird song, I thought, what was it like then? Imagine the noises then, the noises of the, the woods, the jungle. Was it jungle then? Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe it was jungle then. I suppose if they had lions, hyena, rhinoceros. I mean, imagine that, rhinoceros wandering around Somerset. <laughs> it's quite incredible, isn't it, to think about it. I remember someone saying to me a little while ago, I'd love to go forward in time, about a 100 years, or even only 50 years, just to have a look, see what it's like then. And I've always thought the opposite. Now, I don't want to go forward in time. You know, each year that goes by, I think, well, things are getting far worse. I'd like to go back in time, not to the Victorian times, you know, not to a couple of thousand years, not to a couple of thousand years BC, but half a million years or even more. How long's the earth been here? When, when was this big bang? Was it four and a half billion years? I mean, that's incomprehensible as well, isn't it? Totally. Four and a half billion years ago. You think, well, hang on a minute. Uh, I can kind of work out 50 years ago, yeah. 2,000 years ago, yeah, we got the history from there. But was it four and a half billion years? You know, this Big Bang, this is what I want to know. The Big Bang, okay, something went bang and all the rocks and planets came out they were planet, you know, formed into planets and stuff and suns and the rest of it we know all that what went bang that's what i want to know what was there before the big bang now I, i've mentioned this over the years to people you know what do you reckon there was before the bang and you know most people say well nothing well you can't have nothing to go bang a firework goes bang a gun goes bang you can't have an explosion of well of that kind of <laughs> magnitude. 
I mean, imagine the size of the the Big Bang to blast out all these huge rocks. Where do the rocks come from? I mean, we're sitting on a rock, aren't we? You know, the, the planet Earth is a rock. Something must have gone bang. Now, what was it? Before, was it one huge planet, do you think? Was it one massive lump of rock that for some reason decided to explode and create the universe? I don't know. And I suppose we'll never know, will we, what there was before the Big Bang. Anyway, we won't know that, but we do know about half a million years ago in the Wookiee Hole Caves. <laughs> Imagine the kids. Imagine the women. They, I mean, they lit fires, didn't they? They cooked the meat. Yeah, apparently a lot of the meat, uh, well, all the meat, they did cook it. They didn't just eat it raw. History was never my subject, so I have no idea. I've been reading up a little bit on the internet about Stone Age times, Bronze Age, Iron Age and all this, but I, I can't take it all in. There's just so much. What I was trying to find out online was kind of a half a million years ago at the caves. Uh, you know, cavemen, as they called, Stone Age men, cavemen. Fascinating stuff. I mean, some caves that we've seen, I, I haven't, but there are drawings, aren't there? Paintings of animals and weapons and the people, you know, the, the actual Stone Age people, drawings of them. Fantastic to have that sort of thing still around all these, well, all these years later, half a million years or more later. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take you into the woods now with my outside broadcast recorder. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this. It's just bird song and things in the woods. Have, have a quick listen. I won't bore you with it. Not the best of recordings, of course, because um, there's the wind and there were cars I could hear in the background. But uh, I've got some better recordings. I might play a little bit more later on. But just so wonderful to be standing in the woods, having driven there from uh, you know, where I am down here on the south coast, about, what was it, 140 odd miles, I think, not that far. But it's the M27 motorway and all the other roads and the traffic. Honestly, the traffic, the motorways were just solid. They're doing roadworks all over the place. There were four lanes uh, and the hard shoulder on a lot of the motorway just jammed up with traffic. It's just awful. And then to get to, to the place, to unpack and to wander out into the woods, to hear the birds, it was just, well, it's, it's indescribable, really. It, I just love the woods. As you know, you know I love the woods. I'm always banging on about the woods. So going back again, half a million years, <laughs> as I seem to keep doing, it's not just the UK, the whole world. Uh, uh, take, for example, uh, Dubai, with their towers and their massive hotels and all the stuff they built out there. None of it was there. I suppose that was just sand out there, wasn't it? Sand, sea and woodland, forest and stuff like that. Jungle. Fantastic. Look what we've done. Look what we've done to the planet and what we continue to do. Now, I'm not going to bang on about climate change and all the pollution and stuff like that. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying what we've done to the planet can't be any good for the planet. Now, in the old days, and when I say the old days, I don't mean the 60s, dinosaurs became extinct. Was it the Ice Age, they reckon, or something killed them? And uh, was it ne Neanderthal man or something? I think he became extinct and Homo sapiens took over. And I think that's the case. What I wonder is this. Will we, us human beings, will we ever become extinct? Now, there's a thought. Will we human beings ever be wiped out by something? We've just had this coronavirus, haven't we? Well, we've still got it. Will something like that wipe out the human race? I mean, you don't know. You don't know. There could be a, a meteor. Is it a meteor or a meteorite? which is the one that strikes the earth, the one that comes down. Anyway, one of those lumps of rock from outer space, one of those could come flying into the planet, you know, belt the planet with such force that it knocks it off course. We all go flying out into space along with our polluting cars and our houses and 
all the stuff we've built all goes flying off into space, and that's the end of us. And then what would happen? The planet would recover. It would be on its new course orbiting the sun. Climate would, yeah, that would be climate change, wouldn't it? Then things might survive. You might get things like rats survive because they were underground at the time or something. You know what I'm saying? So humans have gone. I read something years ago about uh, weeds and uh, bushes, grass, undergrowth, all that sort of thing. They reckon that if everyone vacated somewhere like London, it would only take a few months before the roads, the pavements started being covered with greenery, you know, foliage, not foliage, weeds, plants, flowers popping up, weeds everywhere, ivy nipping up and growing up buildings. And it wouldn't be very, very long, only a few years before London would not be recognisable because there'd be all this plant life everywhere, animals moving. What did I see on the telly the other day? Oh, where was it, Joe? I met, my memory's hopeless. Elephants were moving in. Um, I forget which country it was. Elef a herd of elephants, loads of them, were walking in, heading towards a city because their habitat had been destroyed. Now, this was the other day on TV, a few days ago. Uh, yes, their habitat had been destroyed and they're looking for somewhere to go. And of course, they're wandering through this city. Where was it? Oh, you'll know, you'll be thinking, oh, I know. I bet you're shouting it out now. Oh, it was so-and-so. Oh, I'll remember later on. But imagine that. Imagine if we all disappeared and elephants moved into a city. Well, they'd soon, the elephants would soon make it home, wouldn't they? There'd be stuff growing, there'd be plants growing. They'd soon make it their home and the buildings would all, I mean, what are buildings? It all, it's come out of the ground, isn't it? Bricks, cement, concrete, it's all come out of the ground. It would all eventually go back into the ground. I'm not over a few years, like a million years or so, there'd be no trace of anything, would there? Fantastic thought, imagine that. So what would happen to all the knowledge, all the electronics, space travel, everything like that, all gone? If we disappear, it's all gone. And then, now this is the interesting bit. Well, it's all interesting. And then, in thousands of years' time, other people inhabit the planet Earth, all right? And they start digging up things. And they think, oh, what's this? Look, look, a transistor radio <laughs> from way back when, thousands of years ago. No, not a transistor radio, but they start finding things. And they think, look, these people had electricity. There were people on this planet that had electricity. We'd probably be called the Electronic Age, not the Stone Age. Actually, when I said thousands of years, I should have said millions of years, because life would, humans, well, I don't know that they would ever come back. But you know, if we did start evolving again from wherever, then millions of years' time, they might start, as I say, start digging and find stuff. It's quite a fantastic thought, isn't it? But uh, the way we're going, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, I wouldn't be here to be surprised, but it wouldn't surprise me if we wiped ourselves out. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know. What would the planet, imagine the planet, if it could think, and the animals, they'd be saying, what, what was all that? What was that disease? Oh, it didn't affect us. It got rid of the humans. And they'd be saying, that's a result. It's quiet. Listen, I can't hear any traffic. There's no noise. There's no parties raving and pubs and that with chinking glasses it's quiet foxes could wander around the city as they do anyway but without all the noise and without the danger of being run over or well, hedgehogs get run over all the time don't they the hedgehogs will be thinking well this is definitely a result get rid of the cars no i mean that that's a bit silly but you know what i mean it, it would be fantastic for the animals and for the planet <laughs> if we disappeared Perhaps we will one day, perhaps we'll go to live on another planet, probably wreck this one and move on and find another one to destroy. Let's just go back to the woods, shall we, and listen to the, the sounds of the countryside. The little microphone I've got with this recorder, it's only a tiny, well, it's got an inbuilt microphone, which is a bit silly because you're touching the recorder and you can, all you can hear is sort of fumbling noises. The little lapel microphone seems to be quite good. So I've got that on the lapel of my shirt, on the shirt pocket, and it seems to be quite good. So I'll just play you a little bit more of uh, when I was wandering through the woods and the fields. Back outside again, early morning. 
more rabbits. I would say hundreds. I reckon there probably are. There must be well over a hundred around here. They seem fairly tame. Perhaps it's because this is a a kind of, not a camping site, whatever it is, a kind of leisure place for people to stay. They get used to people walking around and cars in the car park. They don't seem to be that frightened. There are some very old houses the other side of the hill. I can see slate roofs. There's a farmer miles away the other side of the, there's a kind of valley. There's a slight breeze this morning, which is nice because the sun is very hot. Though after a terrible start to the year, which was basically cold, wet wind, lashing rain. It was just like an extended winter. It went on and on. And it wasn't until May, I suppose the end of May, until it started to look up a little bit. And now I think we can safely say, well, not we, I, can safely say summer has arrived and this is lovely. Later, later in the year we're off to the Isle of Wight. We normally go there twice a year, take the grandchildren. There's, what's that, is that a rook? What's the difference between a rook, I don't know, and a crow? I'm just walking towards the woods again. Something very relaxing about the woods, the countryside. It really is nice. Someone said to me recently, uh, I forget who it was, we were talking about holidays. And they were, oh, that's right, Ibiza. They were saying, oh, it'd be great, go to Ibiza. They have raves and discos and clubs and whatever that go on all night long. And I said, no, 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 I'd rather go and sit in the woods. And this was a, a chap, um, not much younger than me, I suppose, 60-ish. And he said, oh, what do you want to sit in the woods for? He said, I'd play some brilliant music. It goes on all night. Drinking? No, no, no. No, I did all that when I was young. I don't want to do it now. I, don't get me wrong, I do like a beer or two, but uh, I don't want to go out, <laughs> as he was suggesting, all night drinking at a club. Because he was saying, I was talking about four o'clock in the morning when the birds start singing here. And he was saying, they're still clubbing when it's daylight at four in the morning in Ibiza. No, that's, that's not for me at all. So hundreds of rabbits still here. I thought they were semi-nocturnal, aren't they? Rabbits, I'm not sure now. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look it up online. There are dozens of them. There must be 50 I'm looking at now. Of course, we've got two pet rabbits. Well, I don't call them pet rabbits, actually. They're rescue rabbits. We got them from the RSPCA. They had a, we've had several over the years. They had a bad start in life. So they're rescue rabbits and we look after them. I think that's enough bird song for now. Enough of me wittering on, oh, my knee's gone now. This is a thing when you, when you get older, isn't it? What I'm doing is standing here watching the rabbits and my knee clicked, now I can barely walk. When I got back to the um, chalet, I had a couple of ibuprofen tablets which cured my bad knee in about 20 minutes. And of course the Stone Age people didn't have that luxury, did they? Drugs and things, they had to put up with the pain. So I hope you enjoyed my outside broadcast, as I call it. <laughs> um, gives you an idea. I don't know if you can use your imagination and picture the woods, but the rabbits, there were hundreds of baby rabbits. Well, they, uh, that's where it comes from, isn't it? The expression, breed like rabbits, that's all they do. Eat, sleep and breed. Fantastic though, fantastic to be in the woods. Of course, then on the way home, never like coming home. I like, I like the holiday and I like being back at home. I don't like the journey back because the holiday is over. But coming back on the M27 past Portsmouth and all that lot, ah, oh, the traffic was horrendous. And some bloke, I, I turned off, uh, on this roundabout, I turned off. I did it all properly. I took the slip road, went round the roundabout, took the exit properly, and this chap was blasting. I don't know whether he was blasting me or someone, but he was blasting his horn and he glared at someone else. Then he glared at me and made up, uh, made 
signs with his fingers. I don't know what his problem was. The chap in front hadn't done anything wrong, because he blasted him, and I hadn't done anything wrong. And I just thought, here we are, one minute I'm in the woods, with the animals, the birds, lovely. Next minute, I'm just coming off the M27 motorway. I've got some idiot driver, you know, blasting his horn and putting his fingers up at me. And I thought, this is it. This is what we've done to the planet. All concrete and cars and fumes and people annoyed and agitated. Oh dear, dreadful. Anyway, I'm back at home now. And there's no agitating things and noisy things here. <laughs> Apart from my wife, that is. No, no, I don't mean that for one minute. She's lovely. We had a great holiday. It was my wife and myself. And then we took uh, my mother-in-law, her, her mum, and her mum's friend. So I was with three ladies. So I had to behave myself. And we had a lovely time. Only Monday to Friday. It was a lovely time. And it's now Saturday. And this podcast has got to be on tomorrow morning. So I may not. Uh, well, I definitely won't. Where are we? Half an hour. I won't do the full hour. As I said, I've got more recordings of the woods and things, but I won't overdo it in one episode because, <laughs> because you'll be thinking, you know, what is this about? I was hoping to hear about the 50s and 60s. Next thing I know, it, I'm, I'm half a million years ago in a cave, then I'm in the woods <laughs> in Somerset. Oh, I don't know, happy days. Email me if you want to, raiserants at protonmail.com. Raiserants, all one word, at protonmail.com. If you have any suggestions, uh, rude or otherwise, be great to hear from you. I don't know what next week's episode. I've got an, a list somewhere. Oh, that's another thing. My little outside recording thing I bought, uh, my dictaphone. I'm going to use that instead of bits of paper to write down ideas on. If I think, oh, I know, I know an idea for next Sunday's podcast episode. I'll just press record, speak into it and press stop. And that way I won't lose bits of paper. I'll just lose the recorder instead. <laughs> oh dear, there we are. Anyway, I just heard on the weather forecast. Where are we? It's Saturday the, where's my computer? 12th of June. This is going on tomorrow, this episode. I've just heard that today and definitely tomorrow could be the hottest day of the year so far. So how about that? I better put my shorts back on. Oh, good job you're, it's not video you're saying. Good job this isn't a video recording. You don't want to see me in my shorts. I've already frightened the people down Somerset Way. I must admit, I don't like it too hot. When we went into the Wookiee Hole Caves, we were saying to each other, you know, should we take a jacket? It's 11 degrees. Is that hot? 11 degrees? It's not hot, but it's not cold. Should we wear a jacket? So we all wore just sort of light summer jackets, and it was perfect. But the funny thing was, coming out of the caves into the sunlight, the heat... The difference, it reminded me of when I landed uh, at Cyprus and we stepped off the plane at Cyprus. It was at night and the heat nearly knocked us over. Whoa, what's that? It was fantastic with the closeness of the heat. I was hoping, well, when we were on holiday, I was hoping there was going to be a thunderstorm because that's what I want to get on my little recording device. The rain, I did get some rain. Um, I played that earlier, didn't I? But I was hoping the sky went black. I thought, here we go. It started to rain a little bit. I couldn't hear any distant thunder. That's what I want to get on on my little recording device. The rain coming, then the distant thunder, and then the loud cracks of the lightning strikes. They're fantastic. I love all that. I wonder what the Stone Age men thought of that. They probably thought it was some... Did they have gods? Did they worship? No, they didn't worship gods then, did they? Apparently, they could communicate. They were quite intelligent. Was it the Homo sapiens? We're the Homo sapiens, aren't we? And they were the uh, Nathanatal man. I think they were quite intelligent, so I was reading. And I, I wonder how they communicated, because what I was reading, it said that they did communicate. Now, obviously, they didn't say, you know, hi, Fred, how are you doing? Are you hungry? Shall we go hunting? <laughs> and they didn't write notes to each other. But I suppose they, they grunted and pointed. I suppose if you look at your wife and, well, no, not your wife, you look at one of the ladies, I suppose. Did they do the cooking? I mean, I don't know. Is it is that sexist? Did they have that, <laughs> did they have that sort of thing in Stone Age times? You, know, you can't, uh, can't say that the wives cook while the men go hunting because that's sexist. I don't know. They probably didn't have any of that nonsense. They probably did what they were best at doing, 
I suppose the men were best at hunting and the women were, were best at cooking. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? That's not sexist. It just makes sense. But I suppose you could point at your mouth and go, uh, 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 and that means you're hungry. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or perhaps rub your tummy to make out you're starved. I've always starved. I've got to go on a diet. I now have to go on a serious diet. Uh, on the five days away, Monday to Friday, I was eating cake. I was eating crisps and lovely meals. We had, oh, my wife's a brilliant cook. Lovely meals and packed lunches that she did. And now I've put on, I've put on about five pounds. I can't quite understand that. Five pounds. So I now have to go on a serious, serious diet. Not just a serious one, a doubly serious diet. Because I was hoping to get beach body ready for Somerset. Well, Somerset body ready. Now, later in the year, we're off to the Isle of Wight, just the two of us. So I'm going to have to get Isle of Wight body ready. <laughs> Again, it's Monday to Friday, Isle of Wight. No grandchildren this time, just the two of us. It's going to be rather odd. In fact, it was quite funny because we had uh, mother-in-law and her friend with us. And my wife was saying, uh, oh, it's worse than taking the kids with us on holiday because... I don't know, one of them wanted this and one of them wanted that. And it was quite funny. It was like having the children with us. It was funny. OK, going to end the podcast here. Only about, what, 40 minutes, is it? Something like that. Going to end it here because, um, as I say, I've been away all week, so I haven't got much to report and I can't keep on about Stone Age men. If you've got any thoughts, I I'd like to hear from you. If you've got any thoughts about the Big Bang, what was before the Big Bang and what was it that went bang? That would be great to hear from you, hear your ideas. Anyway, I also need some ideas for next week's podcast. So get your old fingertips bashing away on your keyboards, keyboard warriors, and come up with some good ideas. I've got another one. Um, what was it? Someone suggested pets. Well, we've done animals, pets. I don't know. What do you think? Is that a good idea? Pets back in the 60s and pets now? I'm not sure. Not sure whether I could do that. I know a lot of people had chickens back in those days. Lots of people. I mean, there were, I can think of one, two, over the road, three, four of our neighbours in one street. Not all immediate next door neighbours, but four people in our street. Three of them had chickens and one had bantams. So, I mean, they're not pets, but that shows how times have changed. A lot of people back then had chickens. And why not? you got fresh eggs. Well, and fresh chicken, I suppose, if you want to make a... Uh, Chicken and chips or something. I'm rambling now. Hope you're okay. Uh, July, no, June the 21st looks like that is now changing again uh, as far as the end of lockdown is concerned. I just heard somewhere on the radio, what was it they said? Ju July 19th or something. I don't know. I can't keep up with it. All these dates, everything keeps changing. We had to wear, one thing was disappointing in the caves, the Wookiee Hole caves. We had to wear masks. But we were very lucky. We were the first people in when it opened. And I think, well, there were four of us. There were a couple of people and, and a child. And that was oh, and another couple. And that was about it. We let them wander off uh, ahead. So we basically then had the caves to ourselves. And I must admit, I took my mask off because uh, I, I wanted to breathe in the atmosphere of the caves. You know, the cool air down there. Absolutely fantastic. I shall see you next week. Behave yourselves, take care, and don't forget to email me. Bye-bye for now.